All right. Hey, everyone. So today we're going to um, dive into something pretty fascinating. If you've been following, you know, cybersecurity and international relations lately, you're going to love this. We're taking a look at an article from Florida Politics all about Chinese hackers targeting high profile U.S. political figures. We're not talking digital security here. This is about power and information and what's happening in the world of global politics. Yeah. And what makes this particular incident so interesting is that we aren't just talking about you know, some random government employees, this operation went straight for the top. Yeah. We're talking Donald Trump, J.D. Vance, and even people connected to Kamala Harris's campaign. It really kind of highlights that these kinds of attacks can reach the very core of our political systems now. Yeah, it's like right out of a spy thriller. And the article lays it all out, saying that the FBI is investigating unauthorized access to commercial telecommunications infrastructure by actors affiliated with the People's Republic of China. And to show how seriously they're taking this, they're even teaming up with industry partners to, you know, improve cyber defenses. But here's where things get even more interesting. We still don't know how much data was actually accessed. Yeah, that's the missing piece of the puzzle. And it yeah. makes analyzing the situation really complicated. If we don't know exactly what information they might have gotten their hands on, then it's hard to know, you know, how much damage was done or what China's objectives even were in this case. But looking at their past activities can give us some clues. Right. So let's get into that. What can you tell us about China's history of cyber espionage? Is this something new for them or is this kind of their standard playbook? Oh, uh, oh no, this is not their first rodeo. China has a history of engaging in these large scale hacking campaigns for all kinds of reasons. Think of it like a toolbox. They have different tools for different jobs. Sometimes they're after private data of Americans. Sometimes they're infiltrating American companies to steal corporate secrets. And sometimes they even target U.S. infrastructure. Wow. So they're casting a pretty wide net here. So they're basically playing the long game, collecting information to use it later to gain leverage in this global power struggle. Exactly. It's all about gathering intelligence and then using that information for economic or political gain. Now, if we go back to this Florida politics article, it doesn't really say what specific data was accessed in this case. And that makes things even more mysterious and concerning. You're right. It's like a shadow has been cast and we don't know what's in it. What did they get their hands on? And more importantly, what are they going to do with it? And these situations really show the vulnerabilities of our interconnected world. Think about how much of our lives rely on digital communication and data storage these days. This incident with these high profile figures really shows how important cybersecurity is, not just for governments, but for companies and for everyday people. Yeah, it really makes you think if people like this with all of their security measures can be targeted, what about the rest of us? Absolutely. And the article also looks at how the public reacted to all of this. The comments section, as you can imagine, had quite the mix of opinions and anxieties. The comments section. Oh, yeah. It's always interesting, sometimes even entertaining to see how people react. Some of the comments brought up really valid concerns about data security and the political fallout. But then there were some that went off the rails, people predicting elections based on this or worrying that the Chinese government is going to steal their cat videos. It's really fascinating to see all the ways people process this kind of information. You see fear, humor and a lot of misinformation mixed in with real concern. Yeah. And it shows how important it is to filter through the noise and get to the heart of the issue. Cybersecurity isn't just a niche topic anymore. It affects everyone. And we all need to understand the risks. Exactly. And that's where understanding the technical details is important. The article talks about commercial telecommunications infrastructure. But what does that even mean for those of us who aren't, you know, tech experts? That's a really good point. It's easy to gloss over these terms. So could you break down what this infrastructure actually is and what makes it vulnerable to hackers? Yeah, we got to break down those terms. So when we say commercial telecommunications infrastructure, we're talking about like the network that lets our cell phones work. Things like cell towers, fiber optic cables, data centers, and all the software that makes it all run. It's crazy how much we depend on this complex system without really thinking about it. But when you describe it like that, it's pretty clear how vulnerable we'd be if someone found a way to exploit those weaknesses. Exactly. And the potential consequences are pretty significant. Mm -hmm. These attacks could disrupt communications, steal data, and even shut down essential services. And that could have an even wider impact on businesses and governments and international relations, too. Exactly. And that brings us back to something interesting in the comment section of that Florida politics article. It kind of reflects what's going on in society as a whole. People are becoming more aware of the cyber threats, 
but there's also a lot of misinformation and fear going around. It's like everyone's heard of cybersecurity, but they don't really get it. Yeah, it's become this buzzword, right? Anything tech related that sounds scary falls under that. But not really understanding it can be dangerous. People who want to do harm, whether it's hackers stealing data or political groups trying to cause chaos, can use that fear to manipulate people and exploit those vulnerabilities. Exactly. So the question is, how do we teach people about cybersecurity without overwhelming them or making them feel hopeless? Yeah, it's about finding that balance between giving people enough information to protect themselves, but not overloading them with technical stuff or scaring them. Like you want to give them the tools to build defenses, but not make them afraid to even go online. Right. Using humor can help make complex topics easier to understand. I think we need to communicate clearly, avoid the jargon, and focus on practical things people can do in their everyday lives, basically building good cybersecurity hygiene. Cybersecurity hygiene, I love that analogy. So for those who might not know what that means, what are some basic practices that fall under that umbrella? I imagine it's kind of like regular hygiene, you don't need to be a germaphobe, but there are certain habits that can help you stay healthy. Right, it's like washing your hands to avoid spreading germs. Having strong, unique passwords for each of your accounts is key. Turning on two-factor authentication wherever you can adds an extra layer of security. And be careful about phishing scams. Don't click on links you don't recognize or open attachments from senders you don't know. These are small steps, but they can really protect your data and your privacy. So it's about being proactive rather than reactive. Taking steps to reduce your risk before something happens. It's like locking your doors and windows. It's not perfect, but it definitely makes it harder for someone to break in. Exactly. And this brings us to another interesting thing the article touches on, the possibility of election interference. One of the comments mentioned concerns about these hacking attempts being used to change the results of elections, which brings up the question of how secure our voting systems really are. Yeah, that's a big issue, and people are rightly concerned about it. I mean, fair elections are the foundation of a democracy, but the article doesn't actually show any real proof that these hackers were trying to mess with the elections. It's just speculation at this point. Right. It's important to stick to the facts. But even though there's no direct evidence in the article, it does raise a valid concern. How vulnerable are our voting systems, especially now that information warfare is becoming so advanced? It's like a whole new battlefield. Instead of bombs and bullets, it's all about data and stories. The goal isn't necessarily to destroy things physically. It's to change people's minds, make them distrust each other, and ultimately control the results of elections. It's a scary thought, and it shows how important it is to protect our democracy. It's not just about the technology. It's about understanding the media and thinking critically, too. We need to give people the tools to actively protect their own democracy. Exactly. And going beyond that, what can we do as individuals besides practicing good cybersecurity hygiene to protect ourselves from these threats? What steps can we take in our everyday digital lives to be safer and more aware? That's a great question. And it kind of goes back to what we were talking about with media literacy. Being mindful of the information you take in and share online is a really good way to protect yourself. It's kind of like having your own cybersecurity filter. You question where information comes from, you check the facts, and you're careful about clicking on those crazy headlines or links. So be your own fact checker. Don't just believe everything you see online. Take a second to stop and think about it and decide if the information is actually reliable. Exactly. And on a more practical level, being careful about your digital footprint is important too. Think about what you're putting out there on social media, forums, even those online quizzes and surveys. That quiz about your favorite movies might seem harmless, but it could be collecting data that builds a picture of your life and your habits and that can make you vulnerable. It's a good point that privacy isn't just automatic anymore. We have to actively protect our own information. Exactly. And that includes being smart about the devices and apps you use. Do some research, read the reviews, and understand what the companies are doing with your data. It's like choosing who to let into your digital home, right, Jay? Great analogy. Okay, so let's shift gears a little and talk about how this hacking incident affects things internationally. The article doesn't go into a lot of detail, but knowing your interest in international relations, I bet you're wondering what the consequences might be. Oh, for sure. This could really make things worse between the U.S. and China, which is already a complicated relationship. We're talking about accusations of spying, attacks on important figures, and maybe even meddling with elections. It's a recipe for more tension. Yeah, it definitely doesn't help. And it raises a lot of questions about how the U.S. is going to react, sanctions, mm -hmm. 
more cybersecurity measures, mm. retaliation. It's a delicate situation that needs to be handled carefully. It's like a game of chess where every move has huge consequences. Exactly. And that highlights the importance of communication and diplomacy so things don't escalate and everyone stays calm. This whole incident shows that cybersecurity isn't just a technical problem. It's a really important part of international relations and keeping the world stable. It reminds us that we're all connected in this digital age and what happens online can have a real impact on the whole world. Absolutely. So as we wrap up this deep dive into this story, which is both fascinating and kind of scary, what are the key takeaways you want our listeners to think about as they process all of this and maybe even do their own research? I think the most important thing is this. Cybersecurity isn't just something for IT people to worry about anymore. It affects all of us. It's part of our daily lives, and it has a huge impact on our society, our democracy, and our world. I agree. It's something we all need to take responsibility for, and that means education, awareness, and action from individuals, companies, and governments. It means staying informed, being careful, and understanding that in this digital world, we have to protect our privacy, our security, and the systems we rely on. We've only scratched the surface of this complex and constantly changing topic, but hopefully this has made you curious and maybe even inspired you to learn more, to explore more, and to talk about these important issues. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for more deep dives into the topics that matter.